Hi, welcome to Grid Down Preparedness. This is the first video that you've watched. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. There's an entire playlist of videos at the end of this video that you can click on to see the entire testing series of this portable power station setup. Right now we're running two Pecoron E3600 LFPs and right now we are still off grid. This morning we did a charging uh, recharging of the power stations with the generator because it was going to be a bad solar day with cloud cover and the first thing I did was kill these power stations all the way down to zero. I used a lot more electricity in the house to do things that I normally don't do when I'm doing off-grid testing. So I ran my water heater, used as much power out of the power station as I could with the water heater. I cooked breakfast on the stove. That used a lot of power. We got down and I finished them off using the 15-watt, uh, 15 1500 watt heater and a couple of fans and got this thing down. Um, power station two, so the one that is on the right side of the screen, it died first because it had a little higher load on it. Power station one was right behind it. Uh, didn't last much longer than, than the other one did. So they pretty much shut down at the same time. But a couple of key points that I want to cover. If you're trying to charge your system with 240 volts, and you want to output 240 volts, you cannot charge your power station. It will not let you do it. It's going to give you an error message. So the way that I do it is I take this plug that's plugged into the 240 voltage hub and we plug it into the generator. The next thing I do to make it charge is I pull out the synchronization cable which is plugged into the left side of the power station and you have to unplug both of them. Now I did do a test and you can see my notes there. I did do a test earlier that once this first power station over here, power station two died, I left the actual 30 amp parallel cords plugged in with that out. This unit was completely dead and this one still had a little power and I realized that once I restart the AC power without that plugged in, this unit started beeping, which I knew that would happen. I have a short that I posted earlier today. Um, but this unit was still able to output power to the house and I draw that all the way down that way with uh, that unit beeping. Now when I went to recharge, I realized something wasn't right. I kept popping my GFCI breaker on my generator and when I was trying to recharge, I actually left these cables running right here. So the cables running to the 240 voltage hub, I left those plugged in and the generator did not like that. It, it detected a ground fault and tripped offline. Whenever I would plug the two in, it tripped offline. So you do have to unplug your 240 volt hub when you recharge your power stations. Now, as I said earlier, we recharge these with the generator and with solar. So I let the sun do what it was going to do. I knew it was going to be partly cloudy today. Uh, as you can see right now, we'll go outside and take a look. Um, this is pretty much what we have for cloud cover. Now, earlier in the day from about maybe 1030 to 1, we, we actually started getting uh, clear skies. Uh, clouds have now just started rolling in. And that really helped charge this system up. It charged up with solar and the portable power station from zero to 100% in about six hours. So I took everything off grid, went to generator power at 8 a.m. And just before 2 p.m., the power stations were saying they were completely full. They were only drawing about 18 watts each. So I went ahead and shut the generator down to save fuel. Um, fuel consumption on the generator, I was not completely 100% full as I've been running all my other tests with this because this fuel in here um, is from the beginning of hurricane season and we are just a little bit below half a tank in the generator and this has an eight and a half gallon tank 
So theoretically, you could probably get two complete charge cycles uh, for the 18 kilowatts that are sitting here right now. So I have 18 uh, kilowatt hours of energy storage. Uh, please go look up the short video, which is on the playlist, and you'll see that uh, th one of the power stations actually overperformed a bit uh, while I was trying to take everything down using a clothes dryer as well. And I was pulling over 3,600 watts for about 35, 40 minutes or so, and it did not get o overheated. I didn't take video of it because I was actually concerned with running a test and keeping my power stations from uh, overheating. So I was really watching the temperature close. But I'm happy to report that both of them are happy. I did have an issue during the discharge and the recharge on this power station right here. So power station two, I have battery zero on the bottom and battery one's here. Um, battery zero had an incorrect percentage reading. The volts were exactly the same as the other batteries, but it was reading off in percentage. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna pull this up. And you can see now, all of my batteries are showing 100%. So we're on battery zero, we're at, I'm sorry, we're at 55.4 volts. Battery one is at 55.3, and the host is at 55.3. So that seems to be, it's reading correctly now. We're gonna let it run for as many days as I have beautiful weather and I don't need to use my HVAC system, we're gonna keep it off. I did use my HVAC system though. I ran it for about two hours just to get the house temperature down a little bit more and remove some humidity. And it functioned exactly as planned. I dropped the uh, charging down to 10% and I started my air conditioner at the same time. So we can see here that all of these are pretty much dead even as well. So we're fully charged, have solar coming in, have power going out. So far, very good test. So let me check my notes here. Uh, we covered the time of the test. So the test ran from eight to four, from dead to fully charged in about six hours. And then my issue with battery zero on power station two with the percentage and voltage, hopefully that's remedied with a full battery cycle. I think it is. Um, the HVAC started while the generator was on charge and uh, the charge rate was set to 10% as well as whatever baseline loads the house currently had. Um, ran that, did a two hour test and the reason I did that test is because during hurricane season, it's in the middle of summer and it's hot and I'm going to want air conditioning and I'm going to want humidity control. Southeast Georgia, humidity is really bad in summer, especially after a hurricane when you get all that rain and now the sun comes out and cooks everything. You got a lot of solar coming in. But unfortunately, if you notice uh, one of my videos, it's titled, Will These... Power stations actually start a three and a half ton air conditioner. In my case, with my brand of air conditioner, Oxbox by Train, and my soft starter, my soft starter does not like these portable power stations. It doesn't care about the generator, doesn't mind dirty power. It starts just fine with that, which is cool with me. I do wish that these would run the air conditioner as well. But at the end of the day, I am only storing 18 kilowatt hours. Nine on this unit and nine on this unit. Uh, I don't have any plans to buy another four pack of batteries from Pecoron. But hey, Pecoron, if you're watching and you want to send me four batteries, we will definitely budget those into the test and we'll, we'll run these things until they don't run anymore. But right now, so far, I'm overall satisfied. Like I've said in a few videos ago, it's been a while, back in wintertime. These things do have their quirkiness. Now, 
thank you to everybody who exhibited concern about my stack of batteries. I had them stacked, both power stations stacked on top of the other ones. And this was the stack that was on the bottom. And this battery was on the bottom. I'm happy to report. No damage, no issues with it. Uh, if anything, it was more of a tipping hazard than a weight issue. The cases are very well designed, and I did exceed the load capacity on top of that battery. But now, we're trying something different. Before, I did a test where I had the bonding cable, which is the red and black cable here. It's now going to battery one on each pack. I had great success with it going from host battery to host battery and balancing the loads. When I went to the second battery in the series, so the bottom battery, which would be battery one, and I tried to synchronize the power stations, it didn't like that. They, they did not keep in sync. So what I did is I decided to utilize both of my ports Connect it to the batteries and then my sync cable or DC bonding cable connect it to that battery in the series. It really doesn't matter whether it's battery one or battery zero. It's just as far away from the power station as it is otherwise. But I did notice that there was a point in time when I was discharging under a heavy load and the DC voltage drops I was seeing on these cables about 20, 22 to 24 amps. So if this battery was pulling 24 amps and that battery was pulling 24 amps, that meant that 24 amps was going through this cable and 48 amps was going through the cable and host battery. And you'll have to go back and look at the setup the way that I had everything plugged in before because this battery was plugged into this battery and only this battery was plugged into the host. Um, my bonding cable was plugged in back here. And that was my reasoning for trying this new setup to see if one, it balances, and two, under heavy loads, I'm not placing a high demand on those cascading cables. So anyway, if you found this video helpful, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I do plan on doing a live stream later on this afternoon. We're going to cover some off-grid topics and the hurricane that is bearing down on Puerto Rico and Cuba and Naval Station Guantanamo Bay, where I used to work a few years ago. So please tune into that. I don't know the exact time, but I'd imagine it's going to be somewhere around uh, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. East Coast time. And we'll go on, we'll see how many people show up, and we'll, we'll chat. So thanks for watching.